Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about the topic excipients. What are basically excipients? Excipients, these are the inactive substances which are used in the formulation for the bulking up of the formulation and that they are used with the API medications. Now talking about the contents which we are going to discuss. First of all, the introduction. Then we will have the ideal properties. Then we will have significant rule of excipients. Then we will have classification of excipients. Now, first of all, introduction. Now, an excipient is an inactive substance which is being formulated alongside the API of a medication for the bulking up of the formulation that contain the potential active ingredient. Now, the biological, chemical, and the physical properties of the drug product are directly affected by the excipient chosen and their concentration and the interaction with the API. Excipient determine the bulk of the final product in various doses forms, such as tablet, capsule, etc. Now talking about the ideal properties, we have first of all, it should have no interaction with the drug product. It should be stable for handling. It should be post effective and feasible, and it should be pharmacologically inert or pharmacologically unreactive. Now talking about the next slide, the significant role of excipients. Now significant role. First, we have it should help in the processing of the drug delivery system during its manufacture. Then it should protect, support, or enhance the stability, bioavailability, or the patient acceptability. It should assist in maintaining the integrity of the drug product during its cold storage time. It should help in the effectiveness and for the delivery of the drug which is being in use. Now, talking about the classification of excipients. It, it is being classified into seven classes. These are diluents, binders and adhesives, disintegrants, lubricants and glidants, then we have antiadherents, then we have coloring agents, flavors and sweeteners. Now we are going to discuss each category in brief. First we have diluents. Diluent is a diluting agent. It is basically used for increasing the volume of a formulation to prepare tablets of the desired size. Suppose we have a low dose drug potent, potent drug which is of low dose. So it should require incorporation of the diluent to increase the bulk volume of the powder and basic and in the end the size of the tablet. The diluent it should be chemically inert, non-hygroscopic, causes good pharma bio pharmaceutical properties. Some of the basic examples of the diluents can include lactose, dextrin, microcrystalline cellulose, starch, Pre-gelatinized starch, powdered sucrose, calcium phosphate, and colloidal silica. Now, talking about the second class, we have binders and adhesives. A binder is also known as adhesive. So, added to a drug filler mixture, it ensures the values in tablets can be formed with the required mechanical strength. Binders are used for the mechanical strength as an excipient. Both solution binders and dry binders can be included in the formulation. At relatively low concentrations, binders promote the adhesion of the particles of the formulation, and these adhesion of particles enables the preparation of the granules and at the end the integrity of the final tablet. Now, talking about the examples of the binders and adhesives, some of the binding agents can include starch, gelatin, agar, acacia gum, cellulose derivatives, sorbitol, polyvinyl pyrolidone, and solim alginate and alginate derivatives. Now, talking about the third class, we have disintegrants. Now, disintegrant is included in the formulation to ensure that the tablet will then come in contact with the liquid. It breaks into small fragments which promote the rapid drug dissolution. They are added to the tablet formulation, facilitates its breaking or disintegration when it comes in contact with the liquid or the water in the GI gastrointestinal tract. Now, they basically work by rupturing the cohesive forces which are binding the tablet together and then further leads to the disintegration of the tablet. Some of the examples of the disintegrants can include starch derivative, primogen, some of the clays can be vegum HV, bentonite, then we have the tablets also for the cellulose. Now talking about the fourth class, we have lubricants and glidants. Now lubricants are intended to prevent adhesion of the tablet material 
to the surface of the dies and punch it. See, as we can see, various uh, punching machines have the various surfaces for the dies and punches. So, to reduce the interparticle friction and improve the rate of flow of the tablet ventilation, we are using lubricants. Some of the examples of the lubricants can include stearic acid, stearic acid salt, talc, then we have magnesium stearate and some of the surfactants. Now, glidants. Glidants are intended to promote the flow of the granules or the powder material by reducing the friction between the two parties. Examples of glidants can be cornstarch, talc, then we have silica derivatives, colloidal silicas, aerosin in 0 0.25 to 3% concentration. Now we have another class that is antiadherence. Antiadherence have the purpose of reducing the sticking or the adhesion of any tablet granulation or any powder to the faces of the punches or to the dye ball. In various machines, there are various types of punches and dye balls are there. So to reduce the sticking of the adhesion of the, any tablet powder or tablet granulation to the faces of these punches, we are using anti-adherence. Now such adherence is specially prone to happen if the tablet punches have symbols and markings. Adherence can lead to a buildup of thin layer of powder on the punches, which on the end can lead to the uneven manufacturing of the tablet. Then examples of the anti-adherence can include magnesium stearate and some other substances with limited ability of anti-adherence can also act as tal example. Then we have second last class of coloring agents. Coloring agents are pharmaceutical entities. They impart the preferred color to the formulation. They are basically used for preferring the imparting the color to the formulation. The use of colors and various dyes in the tablet making has served three purposes. First, we have it should disuse of the color drugs. It, it is basically used for the product identification and the production of a more elegant product. There are two types of coloring agents can be used. First, we have natural, then we have synthetic one. Now, examples of the coloring agents can include we have for white, we have titanium dioxide, we have FDNC, DNC dyes. These are very famous dyes. Then for blue, we have brilliant blue example. Now, talking about the last class, we have flavors and sweeteners. So now, flavoring agents are incorporated into our formulation to give the tablet a more pleasant test or to mask the unpleasant one. See, as we can see, some of the tablets have the unpleasant test and they are not palatable. So to make it more palatable, we are adding various flavoring agents to make it more pleasant taste. The latter can be achieved by coat. This can be achieved by coating the tablet or the drug particles. Examples can be include spray dried or other flavors. Sweetening agents. Sweetening agents are employed in the liquid and the solid foundations too. They are designed for the oral administration usually and to increase the palatability of the therapeutic agent. Examples of the sweetening agents can be cellulose or we can say lactose examples. Thank you.